So this is our eighth episode of Pilot Say What, where we hear what pilots have to say. And I, I actually do have the first initial question. I don't know if you know how this goes, but I'm going to do it anyways. Okay. And I'm so, um, Pilot Say What? What? Okay, says so you. <laughs> I don't know. You must have listened to something. Okay, that's exactly. So this is where we hear what pilots have to say. Um, thank you, Andrew, for joining us. Uh, you may have seen Andrew on some other videos. I don't think he's as much on YouTube as what we are, because um, I don't even know if you've seen the videos we've made. I've seen a couple of them, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So well, I appreciate you for helping us out with a lot of those videos. It's been real helpful. But uh, I wanted to introduce you, and maybe you could say something about um, when you started flight school and maybe what you're doing now. Obviously, you're a CFI now, but wanted to give them a little bit of a background. Did you attend Thrust Flight? Yeah, I did. So I, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm from San Antonio, but, uh, you know, uh, Dallas was kind of my second home as a kid. Nice. Um, and then uh, I graduated from the University of Texas in Austin back mm-hmm. in 2019, did a year of medical school. Wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a buddy in aviation. And so I, uh, you know, jumped right into it. Mm-hmm. And in like looking for flight schools, Thrust was a was like an easy find, you know, Nathan right. Roush is just like all over YouTube and like jumps off the board at you. Yeah. Um, and so I reached out to him and, uh, you know, the rest was history. Like I came here, started in August of 21. Mm-hmm. Um, took me about uh, about 12 months to do all my ratings or so, mm-hmm. um, which is a little longer than most people. But Well, we didn't even have EOC then yet, right? Yeah, we didn't have EOCs. So like there was a little bit of check ride delay. And then also I had to take, I had, you know, some like family issues. Then I had mm-hmm. a kid in the middle of all of that. Um, and if so, anything, yeah. I find it impressive that you still say it's, it's still 12 months with yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah. So. There, there, there were definitely some delays. So, yeah. so you know, uh, like getting through it in 12 months was still pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then I've been an instructor now for almost two years. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like nearing the end. You know, I'll probably be right at that like two year mark of instructing yeah. uh, when I hit 1500. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Are you are you already looking at where you want to apply or maybe setting up appointments to go. I don't know exactly the whole process. We've talked about it a couple of times, but I get a little lost because everyone takes a different path, but you're already kind of setting up the next steps. Yeah. I'm starting to look at the next steps. Um, you know, the, uh, the airlines are still, still definitely hiring, you know, mm-hmm. um, the market's changed a little bit from when I first started in, mm-hmm. um, but it's still definitely, you know, th- they're still definitely looking for talent. Um, but, uh, you know, right now I don't have anything specifically lined up, mm-hmm. but uh, the hope would be, you know, either airlines or uh, I've got a few connections in the kind of Part Ninety One world, so oh, okay. private aviation as well. Um, and so looking into that, you know, at this point it's it's uh, it's you know, fair game, right? Yeah, any, any anything's fair game. Flying a jet's flying a jet, you know. Exactly, and that sounds it sounds fun uh, to me. The, the way people describe uh, being in one of the bigger planes that. But the jets, I'm like, wow, it's, it's, I didn't, I would have never <laughs> thought like you would think about it that way. I mean, I have a, I have a standard car, right? right. I really, I try to tell people, well, I just, I don't know. It's not, it's actually harder. I don't know why I like driving it. I just like the way it feels. It's probably better to have an automatic though, but right, right, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I like my standard. So I can only imagine what it's like to fly a plane, let alone a jet. So, yeah, yeah. Um, well, did you, did you, so I wanted to go back to med school. You know that. You're like, oh, man, this just wasn't for me. At some point, you decided maybe it was for you. And then when you're in there, it, and I don't know if you how much you really want to go into that, but I'm wondering, at some point, it was just like, I just don't like this. Was it this? Was that kind of the realization? Yeah, so I uh, I got into medical school um, like late in college. Like I was very curious about it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and, okay. uh, you know, I, I got all the prerequisites were done and whatnot and then, mm-hmm. and then started it. Uh, and med school up in Virginia was where I was at. Mm. And, you know, it was in the midst of COVID. Uh, yeah. None of the classes were actually in person. They were, they were all remote. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, we were, we were doing everything over the internet, which I didn't really love, you know, yeah. it's not really, a, not really a super conducive way to learn. Mm-hmm. I found, um, and then I also found that, you know, the, the mentality was very cutthroat. And that mm-hmm. was, I think, the thing that that uh, that pushed me away the most was that, you know, I was expecting it to be very collaborative and, and mm-hmm. you know, like your classmates help you and you work together. Um, and it was very much not that way okay. um, in my experience. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then kind of 
getting some exposure to aviation where it is very much like you're working one-on-one with another instructor Mm -hmm. you're like it is a build upon each other like you're you're you know we're the where we stand in aviation today is only because of you know eons of of learning and like passing down information from person to person to person Mm -hmm. um which is how it is in any field but but i found in aviation it was this like really collaborative uh supportive environment that i really loved you know yeah you, um it's funny cuz i think that uh the way people describe thrust light culture i mean of course i only know so much about the overall culture every time i've met a pilot they're super nice but uh, and i've met a, quite a few now <laughs> right but people describe our culture over here as like you said more of a community based feeling especially with the way that you learn so it, it does sound like the opposite of what you were experiencing then so i mean it sounds like you made a good choice to change in yeah. this direction um did you ever think about being a pilot before that though before you ever talked to your friend or you know you as as a kid i like you know like any kid i was like airplanes were cool yeah you know? like, <laughs> yeah. like that was about it though yeah. um you know I, I never like i definitely was not the type where you know, you hear some pilots are like, I've dreamed about being it since I was five. Um, yeah. That was not really me. Uh, yeah. I I fell into it from kind of a general intrigue and also practicality sense mm-hmm. of like, you know, I've got a kid on the way. I need I need I need a career that's going to start soon. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, kind of it was definitely not like a like initially a dream, but then. You know, you get into it and it's really cool. And it's, like it. it's, it's, it's got this combination of, of, you know, the physical aspect and the mental aspect and, mm-hmm. and very, uh, you know, sucks you in, in, mm-hmm. in, in like learning those skills. Um, and, uh, so, so no, it was, it was, it was definitely not something I started as, as a kid, but, yeah. uh, but you know, at this point might as well have. <laughs> no, right. And, Cause, and that makes sense. Uh, I, we heard, I think one of the pilots, uh, yesterday we were at like a, the rising aviation schools graduation and one of the guest speakers was a pilot and he he used to I think be a principal at some point but nonetheless he talked about how when he was younger he just he always thought it was so cool and then later in life he's like changed from being a principal he's like i'm just gonna go for it uh and i wonder in those situations uh even in your situation did you like even think this is a weird time to be making a change i don't know if i mean did that cross your brain yeah i definitely uh you know i i wasn't uh I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was like a late in life shift, you know, uh-huh. I was like 26 when yeah. they started. Um, but, uh, you know, married kid on the way, Practical. You know, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, like stuff, stuff, stuff in yeah. my life was starting. So it did, it, I did have the hesitation of like jumping into something I don't know much about. That's yeah. a little, a little nerve wracking, but, uh, you know, I've had, I've had some good, I guess, mentors along the way mm-hmm. that have made it, made the process much smoother. You yeah. Know? Okay. Well, um, then just to just to recap, so if you started, did you say you started in about August of 2021 at yeah. Thrustlight, right? Uh, and you you came in without your private or anything, right? Yeah, I had, I had no time whatsoever. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> That's what I just wanted to make sure then. Uh, so now that you're a CFI here, I mean, I, I wonder, is, does the time commitment feel any different than when you were a student? Uh, cause I like to ask people, do you do anything outside of work? Now I know you told me you have a family at this point. So, uh, that's, I mean, do you, do you do anything else outside of your family even? And outside of, uh, working here, do you, I don't know, do you play ball or anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so like as far as the time commitment, yeah. it's, you know, like it's a job as opposed to, to, you know, being a student. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a little more. Um, but as far as like, how it feels on an imposition on my life you mm-hmm. know i still have time for hobbies like yeah. i rock climb um okay. in the evenings with some yeah. friends um i uh you know we're big baseball fans we go yeah. to the rangers games nice numerous times a year yeah. um you know i spend time with my kids uh you know like I, it's definitely you know when you're in the flight instructor role Mm -hmm. you know there is the drive to you know get your hours and 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 get moving and and get onto the airlines Mm -hmm. um but i would say you know it's not so all-encompassing that you can't still enjoy the journey a little bit right right um you you you, uh you 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 shouldn't you shouldn't beat yourself up (laughs) yeah you know what while you're going through this process okay you know it's 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 gonna take the time it takes and 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 you should enjoy it you know yeah and 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 i was what I ask that because I wonder what the expectation is going into it. If 
I know as students, they're like committed. Everyone's committed to what they're doing. But it seems like the students, they're like, well, until I get to a certain point, I really don't even want to focus on, on almost anything else. Uh, and they do still. People hang out with their friends and everything. Right, right. Um, but I always like to ask, hey, what do you, what do, you do outside of this? Because all we ever hear is, oh, I like to fly. But right. I'm like, what else You know, do you like to do? And sometimes people just like to fly. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And do you do you have any particular – I mean, sometimes people just say no. And they're like you said, it's an open – you have a lot of decisions that you can still make. Do you have any particular things you would you would like to do? I mean, do you imagine moving anywhere? Do you imagine flying a certain type of plane? I mean, do you is there any like particular directions you want to go? With it um, all? you know, like like uh, Dallas has has been a really great home for us. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'd like to stay here long term. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know that that naturally means Southwest or American. You know, yeah. if you're if you're looking okay. in the airline world. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for me, you know, at at this point. That that'd probably be one of those two would would be my long term goal, yeah. in in my expectation, you know. Yeah, that'd be nice. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to see how that goes. Maybe <laughs> you'll come back and visit us one more time. Yeah. Um. Well, I want to ask, what is a? Uh, and I'm gonna ask more questions about maybe things that were kind of difficult. Um. This is where I'd like to kind of get a little insight for anyone who may be listening and thinking about going uh going to or starting pilot training. Uh. So. At this point, you see you you see a lot of students, and you obviously were a student with us. Is there a rookie mistake that you've made that you could think um, that you could think of now? They're like, "Wow, I can't believe I didn't think about that." But you might see your students making now still. I don't know if there's any rookie mistakes you can kind of bring up and maybe even give a piece of advice about. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, rookie rookie mistakes that that you make as as a student. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I I would say. Uh, that's a good question. I know it's off um, the top of your head, too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're good. Um, rookie mistakes that you make as a student. Mm. And a lot of times um, when when these kind of conversations come up, we end up talking about, like, you know, maneuvers or, like, part of the oral exams even. They're like, I didn't even know that they were going to cor correct me on something. Um, like, is there even, like, a common thing that you kind of see people struggle with now? You know, the thing that we're trying to emphasize with our students is, you know, you want to make sure, yeah, you're getting the repetitions in, um, mm -hmm. but, you know, that go around, that safe approach, all of those things mm -hmm. um, are still equally important. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so you know, it's a little bit of a departure, but, but, uh, no, that's, I think it's yeah. the right, the right direction. But, Maybe that's a better way that I actually wanted to go with it. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but no, that's as, as far as maneuvers, maneuvers specific, that's, uh -huh. that's really what it is, is, mm -hmm. is, you know, um, students on, 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 on EOC is coming in and, you know, not making that, that go around, let's try this again decision yeah. early enough mm -hmm. um that's definitely one that i that i see there for sure mm -hmm. um and then uh you know we touched on it in previous videos during the oral portion mm -hmm. um you know showing up with your stuff ready to go yeah. right like that that's that's definitely the big the biggest one that, that i see uh when it comes to eoc specifically yeah. um is is you know like when we sit down like those documents ready like let's let's get this going so that so yeah. that you know i'm not spending the first 30 minutes of, of the check ride, like fiddling with stuff, trying to figure out like, is this guy eligible to take this or not yeah. calling instructors, you know, trying to figure out, figure out if, if this is, if this is good or not. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it is a great first impression when we sit down and he's, he's got that folder that he slides across the table and he's like, here's everything in the order you need it. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, fantastic. awesome. Let's go. <laughs> and then you can hop in the plane and with a clear mind. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. That's good. I, you know, I don't think, I remember you talking about that when we made that video, but, um, I guess it's just, when you say it now, I mean, it just sounds like it, I don't, I don't know if I was listening to this, I'd think, Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And when you're, it's it's different too because they're not having to work with DPEs all the time. So, do you think that sometimes uh, a student may underestimate um, how much they need to like still impress someone they might know? You know, does it? it I'm wondering like what keeps someone from. How do you how do you put that mindset into somebody? Yeah. Like, yeah. what's the change in mindset? Yeah, it is. It is an an. Uh you know, unfortunate reality. I mean, I wouldn't even say unfortunate, but it's just a reality of, of yeah. EOCs is yeah. that, you know, like when you are familiar with the person you're going to take the, the check ride with, mm -hmm. right. You know, it's a little less scary, uh -huh. which is good. Right. Um, but also, you know, the, the feeling of the need to be hyper prepared yeah. is a little lessened. Uh -huh. Um, and so, you know, our students still take the check ride or still take the EOCs 
equally seriously um but there you know you know there can i think sometimes be the temptation to relax a little bit and and uh so our approach as inst- as eoc instructors and instructors in general is kind of the like hey is this still your check ride um, yeah you know like let's uh let, let's 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 be as prepared as if as if this was with the dpe right um and i think we do a pretty good job of that um but uh but you know you know as as instructors and as, as students we want to make sure that we're not you know relaxing too much exactly and i guess so uh, now as you say that i've, ha- I've had uh, maybe a few students even on and i've talked to quite a few students and they say uh after getting through their private they realize that their eoc instructor may even be feel more strict uh than their dpe sometimes maybe not in any sort of negative way but uh like since y'all know them you're like hey I know what you need to work on. And, and it sounds like that realization, they have that realization typically, it sounds like, yeah. oh, it's time to kind of, oh, this isn't, this isn't any easier than going with a DP. If anything, y'all may be paying a little bit more attention just by knowing them. Yeah. Um, so when we, I hear we, that. You know, if we've, if we've flown with them before, we, you mm-hmm. know, we've done a ground with them before, whatever mm-hmm. it is, oftentimes like we know the standard to which they can perform. Right. We know how good they can be, mm-hmm. um, you know, and if so, if they're, if, if they're falling short of that for whatever reason, we're like, it, it is more the mentality of like, hey man, I, I know how good you can be. I know I know the, the standard you can perform to. Mm-hmm. So let's get there. You know? Right. And at the end of the day, everyone has to follow the same ACS, right? So yeah. uh, then you're going to hold them accountable to that. So yeah. uh, it's cool to hear students talk about the differences. That's what I've been doing all month. I've been asking people, hey, I know you've flown with the DBA. What was, what's the difference? And a lot of times there's just not much of a difference. They go into it feeling a little less pressure, but um, and then they learn that they still have to be just as prepared. And it's just, it's an interesting mindset to hear like the young students really shift to what it's like to be prepared for something. Yeah, I think that's absolutely. part of what it is too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Okay, well, we've kind of got through some of those things. For you, uh, was there anything that you particularly kind of uh, needed to take an extra... I guess what I'm wondering is, was there was there any like moments where you had to fly in some crazy weather or maybe something that um, you felt like you should have learned earlier uh, when it comes to flying? I don't know. I'm just trying to get like maybe something that was kind of difficult for you because it sounds like you're just flying through. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess like some kind of... Uh like, like learning points for me, you know, uh-huh. um, you know, when I, uh, when I first was an instructor, mm-hmm. uh, the, I've never been like an extremely tech savvy guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a blessing of being at thrust is that, mm-hmm. you know, we use G 1000 glass cockpits there. These systems are, they're incredible in what they can do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, that puts the uh you know the pressure on on the pilot you as the operator to learn the system inside and out um and you know be able to utilize it to its full potential um and so for me going through training you know some of the hiccups that i had were really based upon that like Mm. it was it was based upon the fact that you know we were sometimes we were like getting the new equipment and i was having to learn it you know as as we were we were encountering it you know as yeah. as the planes were arriving because mm-hmm. i've been there as we were starting to get these archers because we had six packs do we had six packs before when you started or uh, we didn't have six packs but we were uh when i started i did my private and uh i did all my ratings other than cf i in a dynon which mm-hmm. is a slightly di- it's glass cockpit still but slightly different okay um and i i did uh private and commercial and cfi and sport cruisers which oh we, yes. We, we still have a couple of them on property, but but uh, our students aren't really flying them much. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. so yeah. The, but for me, for me, learning the systems was was definitely the big thing, and and I think a wonderful part about being at Thrust now with like everything is G one thousand archers. Um, and I actually had a conversation with with a uh, with a student the other day about this mm-hmm. of like from day one, it's going to be the same plane the whole way mm-hmm. through, and you can really own it like it's Mm. it's your bird like you can you can really get into it and learn the intricacies of it from day one and you know by the time you get to cfi cf double i you're a master of it and you can you can really teach that dpe about it Mm. you can really you know hold forth and and really know what you're talking about and that's that's kind of a a definite perk of 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 doing things the way we do at this point that makes sense and and we are we're going to be uh starting to talk a little bit more about the planes uh, here soon anyways but uh i hear that we have a pretty exceptional fleet yeah no um, i mean we, yeah we've got we've got um 
m- many more planes than when when I started. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know the uh, the rate at which we're you know peppering the skies with 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 thrust aircraft is is just wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know it's it's good for us as instructors. We're staying in the air. It's good for the students. They're staying in the air. Mm-hmm. They're progressing through their ratings quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and you know they're getting to they're going to experience it all in these Piper Archers G1000s, which, which have been really good to us. Um, and then, you know, when they move on to the multis, the systems are pretty similar, right? It's, it's Mm -hmm. still a G1000 seminal. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got two engines, so it's a little different. I did see that one. um, I took some pictures of that one the other day, (laughs) but, but, you know, um, the, as far as the avionics go, it's all the same. And, and so they're, they're, uh, they're able to, you know, walk in with something they're familiar with and, and, and really roll with it. Okay, and then well, then we have the Redbirds as well, the, the flight simulators, and it, well, we have like at least two of them over here, uh, right? And mm-hmm. then is so do those? Is it reflecting the G one thousand? Okay, gotcha. I didn't know if it had different options in there. I don't know how yeah. those work very well. Yes, yeah, so the the, Red, yeah. the Redbirds have the ability to be configured in various different okay. ways, um, because you know you can kind of interchange them as you want. Okay, um, but all of ours are configured for a G one thousand setup. Um, mm-hmm. and it's, it's great for early in their private rating. Um, we can expose them to, you know, like, here's how you plug in a radio frequency. Here's how you, you know, use the GPS in very basic manners. Mm-hmm. Um, we can, we can introduce it to them there early in private. Um, mm-hmm. and then it's also phenomenal for instrument where, mm-hmm. you know, crosswinds and things like that. I hear people say yeah. stuff about that. Well, yeah. So it's, it's got, I mean, it's got a bunch of stuff as far as that goes, but when they get an instrument training, they're able to like the whole thing, like all of instrument is inside. You're just looking at the screens. Yeah. And so early on, they're just in the simulator and, you know, they can learn a lot of the procedures and, and the basics of, mm. you know, how to load approaches, how to, how to do some of the basics of instrument flight without mm. being in the plane so that when they do get to the plane, that time is much more efficient. We're mm. not, we're not having to learn some of the basics of, you know, where's that button? Um, yeah. That sort of stuff. On the uh, spot when you should be focusing on flying or exactly, whatever stuff. Exactly. That sounds nice to be able to practice beforehand because there's so many scenarios when your first time, I mean, one of my jobs, I remember they trained me for a little while and we're reading a bunch of modules and I'm doing all this online training just with me, some headphones on at a, at a computer. Right. And I remember like, they're like, all right, now go out there. And I was like, Oh, I just yeah. was not ready <laughs> at all, which is, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a learn. I learn well hands on. Um, but even then, the flight simulator seems like it feels hands on. Yeah, so, yeah, it's cool. it's a, it's a good intermediary between like you know you can read a manual of how to of how to use the system, mm-hmm. and then you hop in the plane to use the system. It's a good step between of like you know I'm getting to use the system in a low cost, low risk environment where yeah. you know we're not dodging aircraft and whatnot. You <laughs> yeah, know, not having stress about it. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, well. You mentioned the – oh, I like how – I just wanted to touch on this before we went towards some of the last closing part. Um, you mentioned you can – like you mentioned the words teaching the DPE. Is that what it feels like sort of in a check ride in an EOC or a check ride? Is it kind of like you should – it almost sounds like you're suggesting that someone should almost feel prepared to be able to teach someone. That's what it – is that what kind of what it's like? I mean, not, not necessarily. Uh Um, we, we would like them to be, you know, at a, uh, at a degree of mastery of their material that, you know, if I ask them to explain something, they're able to really do a good job of it. Um, when they get to obviously the, the instructor ratings, Mm -hmm. so the CFI and the CFII and and eventually the MEI, if you're interested in it, Mm -hmm. um, the, the check ride itself is basically teaching Mm-hmm. the dpe a full lengthy flight lesson mm-hmm. um and ground lesson uh prior um and so for for those ratings specifically yes it's very much teaching yeah um but even with myself in in eocs you know some of my questions to really see how much this student understands mm-hmm. the material i'm i might ask them in a scenario to explain something to me um and you know the ones who who really have that and really are able to, to master that information basically do teach me it, you yeah. know? Um, and, and, you know, if, if, if they're able to do that, you know, I'm, that's, that's when I'm, I'm really happy when, and, and, and they're, they're, they're definitely doing well. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, when I was, I remember when I was studying, it seemed like when I was studying with someone and we tried to explain things to each other, I, we would like learn more that way, mm-hmm. uh, from having to explain something to someone. And it felt kind of like, Oh, let me, 
let me teach this to you. And now I feel like I have a better grasp or understanding of it. Or maybe they asked a certain question that I didn't know. And that now I have to go figure that out. Yeah. So uh, it just seems like a good approach before having to do something where you're going to be tested or examined. Yeah, or examined, yeah absolutely. Examined. <laughs> um, okay. Well, uh, I already pretty much got you on all of these other things. Um, you already, you did talk a little bit about maneuvers. Um, I know we're going to be talking a little bit about the power off 180 maneuver soon. We're going to be making a video on that whenever, you know, we can get in the air with the weather being good. Um, I'm kind of excited about that. Is there, is there any off the top of your head, this is off the top of your head. Uh, do you have any sort of maybe a few tips for someone that you, you know, would help many of the students you do fly with when it comes to that maneuver? Uh, to, to that maneuver specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the a power off 180 is basically that you're flying in a traffic pattern. Um, mm -hmm. so you're, you're, you're planning on coming in, into an airport mm -hmm. and it's a simulation of having lost your engine while near the airport, mm -hmm. um, in essence. Right. And so the, the, the maneuver is that you, you lose your engine in the downwind mm -hmm. and, uh, you have to land safely on the runway within a certain standard. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, you, you pick a spot on the runway and you've got to without adding any power, you know, from 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 throttle idle, mm -hmm. um, you've got to descend and land um, safely within 200 feet. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's a challenging maneuver. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably the perhaps on a commercial and CFI check ride, one of the more difficult maneuvers the ones that 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 you know students would be unsatisfactory on mm -hmm. uh most commonly mm -hmm. and i think oftentimes that is because we we try to approach it a bit too aggressive mm -hmm. um you know the 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 recommendation that i always make is that you shouldn't you shouldn't try and change it f too much from what you're already doing for a normal landing mm -hmm. right if your normal landing has a, a downwind, a base, and a final, mm -hmm. the powerful 180 should have those things too, mm -hmm. right? Um, it should have maybe a little bit of a tighter one, right? You don't have the throttle to get okay. you there always, but you want to fly a relatively normal pattern still because from that normal pattern is where you're going to be best able to judge where you are mm. and judge your your glide and, and your float down the runway. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think the thing that we'll focus on when we get to, to that video itself is is let's try and keep this looking as similar to a normal traffic pattern as possible mm -hmm. um, so that we can make those judgment calls so that we're not, you know, forcing the plane onto the runway and, mm -hmm. you know, making unsafe approaches and, uh, you know, forcing the plane down at, at, at way faster airspeeds than we want to, right. or than is really safe for the aircraft. Right. Um, you know, the maneuver, like a, a, a real pro doing that maneuver can do that maneuver safely and effectively with a stabilized approach coming mm -hmm. in, in a relatively normal traffic pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, there may be some changes based upon the winds and the, the environment, the environment of the day yeah. where, you know, you might have to round off some edges and keep it a little bit tight and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, ultimately it should look pretty standard. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of the, the approach that we want to take with it for sure. Gotcha. That makes sense. And when you say, I mean, and of course I'm not a pilot, so I'm kind of, I think I'm tracking here. Um, so when someone's doing a regular landing, right, of course it's not powered off, uh, and you say sometimes they need to give it a little bit maybe more throttle to get it where you want it, uh, it does it seem like maybe in an effort to prepare, they could, when practicing regular landings, they can see how much um, they don't really need to use a throttle, and do you think that would help them in that scenario? Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. that's. That's the recommendation that we give mm -hmm. to students when they go to their check ride. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you go to a commercial check ride and you go do all your maneuvers and then you go do your landings mm -hmm. at, at an airport, um, pretty much every time, yeah, they're not going to give you the power off 180 as the first landing. Yeah. Almost never. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably going to be the second or even the third landing, mm -hmm. right? And Mo more than likely, the landing that's immediately preceding the power of 180 will be your short field. Mm -hmm. And the short field is also a landing where you have to hit a certain spot. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, most people use that as an opportunity to kind of make a dry run. 
yeah. right? You know, you can you can you can do a practice approach with, you know, basically power idle and see what sort of changes you might need to make for that next power off 180. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you'll find that when you do that, you know, during your training as well, not just on the check ride, when right. you do that during your training, you'll find pretty quickly that you know, the maneuver doesn't need to be that aggressive. It yeah. can be relatively normal. Mm -hmm. You can make a consistent approach every time, um, making slight changes for weather, right. um, but you can make it, the, the planes glide pretty well. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, you know, you don't, you don't have to be crazy with it. Yep. Um, and and that's, that, it, that, is, that is definitely a good point as, as far as approaching the yeah. maneuver as a whole. Are there any other things that come to your mind in terms of trying to prepare for that maneuver, uh, like beforehand? Like what are some things that maybe someone could do to prepare for it? If it, if anything comes up at all, <laughs> um, uh, to prepare for it specifically, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like to teach the, the, the maneuver as, you know, from, from that, 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 that perspective of we're trying to make a relatively normal pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, and you kind of have three tools, mm -hmm. right? So, you, so your three tools are the, the actual legs of the pattern right your your downwind your base and your final the actual okay. turns that you're going to be making to mm -hmm. make it to the runway mm -hmm. um and then your other two tools are flaps and a slip um okay. so flaps are you know drag basically mm -hmm. it, when you when you add flaps you add drag into the plane will descend at a faster rate without picking up airspeed mm -hmm. um and then a slip is another method of in, of adding drag as well to help you descend even faster mm -hmm. um so most of your tools help you descend quicker right mm -hmm. um we don't really have many tools that help us climb right mm -hmm. because we don't have throttle right. um and so naturally you're going to have to tighten the pattern a little bit mm -hmm. um but you should approach it from the mindset of you know i'll use the flaps and the slip if i need to get to there mm -hmm. um but realistically the pattern itself should be my primary method okay. of approaching the maneuver yeah. um making that pattern look relatively normal getting on final adding your flaps when necessary when landing is assured um and touching down safely and smoothly yeah. is really the way you want to do the maneuver yeah. um rather than you know the 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 approach that often is made of of you know throwing all your flaps in and making this aggressive slipping descent down towards the runway mm -hmm. uh, which can be really fun sure <laughs> but is definitely not safe and it's definitely not the way you want to be doing it mm -hmm. and is definitely not going to make your dpe sitting in the uh, in the right seat very happy with you okay copy and that's i guess that's part of what i wanted to hear too um okay good well hopefully people find use in that we'll probably we make clips out of these too and so that'll probably Hopefully there's something usable in there that someone can <laughs> learn from beforehand. Uh, I don't know about you, but I still go to YouTube to learn all kinds of things before I'm preparing for something. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I mean, we're going to have some stuff up, but that's good. I appreciate you sharing that, especially from someone who actually is responsible sometimes for whether or not someone passes. I'm not responsible, but, you know, you get to make that final decision sometimes mm -hmm. uh, when they pass a certain EOC or check ride. Uh, well, I mean, I think we touched on like a lot of the things that I wanted to touch on. I think we've gone for a good amount of time here and you've given us a lot of great information. Um, let's see before we go, just, uh, just a couple of few fun things. Like, would you ever eat chicken tenders on a date? <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask that because would I, mean, I ever eat chicken tenders on a date? You know what I mean? Like, is that a bad thing? Like, if someone likes chicken tenders, I ate chicken tenders the other day. So uh, I, I feel like there's not. You know, I, I I'm a believer in the fact that there's no wrong food for a date. Uh -huh. my, my wife and I dated over margaritas and chips and queso. Like awesome. that was that was the only thing we ate. We like I I was in college in Austin and we went uh -huh. to Chewy's for margaritas and chips and queso. Yeah. And that was it. Like that was the only eating out we really did. Oh, that's um, good. and okay. so you know, like dates don't have to be fancy, man. You can, okay, it can be very simple. <laughs> okay, that sounds really good then, because I just know that, that I used to be. I mean, I'm, I'm still kind of picky, but I, I used to be really picky, and I used to be afraid, especially when I was way way younger. I was like, "What if we go somewhere nice?" And I don't like anything except for the chicken tenders. Are they gonna <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna be like that guy that ordered chicken tenders. Is she gonna get the ick? Like you know, uh, I was a little nervous about that, nah, but. Man. Uh, yesterday was it, uh, maybe it was like two days ago or something. We were all somewhere, me and some friends and my girlfriend, and I was like looking at the whole menu. I was like, I don't really want chicken tenders right now. <laughs> and I was, so I ordered them, and I was like, Is anyone gonna say anything? Uh, they shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I know they shouldn't. But it was, anyways. I thought that was funny. I thought about it, so I was like, Let me ask somebody. Well, on that note, 
what, who, who has your favorite chicken tenders? Do you to go to Cane's or do you go to Chicken Express? Do you even eat chicken tenders? <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, like, Cane's is definitely what I what I grew up with for sure. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I went to college in Alabama for a little while uh-huh. and they've got Zaxby's out there, yeah. which is a little different too. We have some like now that. out here too. Actually. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. Zaxby's is good. Uh, there's okay. Bojangles too. There's a lot of places to get chicken tenders. There so. really are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you, I switched it up sometimes. I've been going to Golden Chick lately. I get the okay. spicy chicken tenders. There we go. <laughs> I dip it in the gravy. It's freaking awesome. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Okay, cool. Well, a lot of people don't even know what Cane's is because people move here and they're like, what's Cane's? Raising Cane's. Right. I right. think it's actually originated from Dallas, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. I, maybe uh, it is. But, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. And then lastly, it's still another food chicken question. Um, what's your favorite wing flavor? Oh, my do favorite wings. I, I, yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, ooh, spicy buffalo probably. That, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty basic, but, uh, but it's so good. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, I, I've been, I lived in Atlanta for a year and uh, I think it's popular out there to get the hot lemon pepper. So yeah. lemon pepper with the buffalo. Absolutely. And we started doing that in Dallas and we call it the Dallas Cowboys flavor at, at the wing stop. Oh, okay. uh, and, but they, they make it seasonal. But even when it's not there, the flavor, I just say, hey, can you mix those two flavors? You have to like call them. <laughs> when it's not, it's ridiculous. I hate that. They, why can't it just be year round? Like everyone gets, I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I get hot lemon pepper. So if you haven't tried that, I'd like no, to make yeah. the suggestion. No, in college, there was one uh, we, we had... Uh... Oh gosh, I'll forget the name. Mm. Um, but we had one that made it was like this, like honey lemon one. It was sweet and it was it was, it was like not, sounds good. Not everyone loved it, but it was really good. It, it sounds good. <laughs> I, I think I saw like a flavor that sounded something like that somewhere recently. I was like, oh, yeah. I want to try it. And I I remember just I I get honey. I mean, I get uh, hot lemon pepper everywhere I go. Like I don't switch it up. I should try some new things now that I've already eaten so many of those wings. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, well. All right, well, maybe next time I see them, I'm like, hey, have you tried those wings yet? <laughs> I feel like I love to tell everyone to try them. And, and afterwards, they tend to say, like, yes. oh, that's my new favorite <laughs> wing. So. Um, all right, well, I, thanks, Andrew, again for joining us. Uh, I think this went pretty well, and it was pretty smooth. So if you guys did enjoy what we talked about here, if you find any value in the things that we talked about, or if you just, again, if you just enjoyed it, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel because, of course, we do one of these a week. This is the eighth episode so far, Pilots Say What, where we hear what pilots have to say. If you're actually interested in learning more about Thrust Flight, uh, go ahead and give us a call or go to our website at thrustflight.com and we'll do our best to answer any questions you have, even if you're just interested.